from Sirius XM's Dr. Radio. This is Coronavirus, everything you need to know. This is Dr. Fritz Francois. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at NYU Langone Health. Dr. Mike Phillips, I'm an infectious disease doc and also in charge of infection prevention at NYU Langone Health. So let's talk about coronavirus. So Dr. Phillips, you and I have had many conversations about coronavirus. Yes. But I want to take a step back. First and foremost, let's talk about the difference between bacteria and viruses. Right. And they are very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes folks think that, you know, a germ is, is, is just one thing. Uh -huh. and, and, and bacteria, actually, the way that they are put together, if you will, uh, they tend to be a little bit more complex. They have different, different, uh, believe it or not, organs inside them, little yeah. functions. Viruses tend to be much simpler, mm -hmm. and and you know that means that you, you know taking an antibiotic, which is typically against bacteria, yeah. against something like coronavirus, never works, and it mm -hmm. doesn't work for the flu or other respiratory viruses. Okay. Um, there 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 are different approaches in their treatment. Um, and, and, you know, because they're so different in their physical makeup, they spread differently throughout, you know, populations, you sure. know, people. Sure. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But, mm. but you know, coronavirus um, is uh, within a family yes. of viruses. And yeah. when you talk about, uh, you know, COVID-19 specifically, right. Right. where did this come from? Well, you know, your point is so important, I think, that, you know, coronaviruses are, are a very common respiratory bug. Mm -hmm. uh, we get them frequently. Yeah. They, they're around, you know, typically around cold and flu season. Yeah. You know, they're one of the causes of, you know, when you have a cold and, 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 and you don't have the flu, but yeah. you, you know, they can, they can cause you to feel pretty poorly, you know, little low-grade fevers some cough, muscle aches and pains. Those coronaviruses are what we say are, are really very low uh, pathogenicity. So they may be very infectious. Yes. They move, move easily from one person to the next, coughing, mm -hmm. shaking hands. Yeah. But when you get them, yeah. unless you're really, you know, like you've had a, a bone marrow transplant, that kind of thing. In other words, your, your immune system, due to the medicines and, and such, is so low and so susceptible. For the vast majority of people, when you get one of these regular garden variety, if you will, coronaviruses, it's no problem. You know, you might be out of work a day or two. This, within this family, though, are a few coronaviruses that don't freely circulate. They're not routinely in circulation. And there are two that we've identified so far, and they have funny names. You know, there's one that's called SARS and one that's MERS, mm -hmm. and those are just initials for a longer title. So, Dr. Phillips, mm. let me just pause here. I want mm. to make sure that I understand what mm. you just shared because it's an important point. Yeah. There are differences between bacteria and viruses. Right. Within the family of, uh, within the category of viruses, yeah. we have coronaviruses, right. which is a family of yep. viruses. Yep. And the, there's this new yes. virus, which yeah. is that we have not seen. I mean, yes. When I say we, yeah. People have right. not seen right, right, right. because these coronaviruses or these viruses, sometimes they are in different species. We know that yep. some of them actually are in humans. But the difference here, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, yeah. is that for the first time, yeah. humans are seeing yes. COVID-19. Yes. Tell me more about that. So believe it or not, you know, um, animals have different viruses and bacteria oftentimes than humans, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's true with wild animals. It's true with our domesticated animals, our yes. cattle, our pigs. In fact, and chickens, this is really where we see flu emerging yeah. every year. Uh -huh. you know? yeah. So, so, so these viruses make the jump from, yes. from human, from animals to humans. Yes. And we probably give viruses Back to the animals, but nobody's you know, talking about that. <laughs> yes, but anyways, yes. be that as it may. So, so um, it, which is true. I mean, people, you know, it's it, it's it's a constant movement. And yes. and what happened in in this event was uh, one of these viruses uh, made the jump, if you will, from an animal source to a human. Mm -hmm. And it it, it it has two characteristics. One that we kind of talked about. One is it also had the ability to go human to human. Mm -hmm. Most, most of these viruses, even these 
uh, influenza viruses, the bird flu you've heard about? Yes. So that bird flu doesn't transmit well from human to human. Mm -hmm. So this bug has the ability to transmit from human to human. So those two things, yes. it made the leap from the animal yes. reservoir to humans, and then it also has this capability to go human to human, means that we, we're, we're seeing it more. So this is very interesting, Dr. Phillips. Mm -hmm. And what I heard you say in terms of mm -hmm. this important component is that now that it made that jump yeah. from one species to another, to yeah. humans, and the fact that it's new, yes. uh, we have not seen this. That's correct. Unlike influenza, yeah. where we've seen it before. Yes. Um, you know, people actually get the flu and yes. they get over it. Since this is new, yeah. our bodies are reacting differently to it because it's new to us. So let's talk a little bit about symptoms. Yeah. What are the symptoms that one might see for this new virus, COVID-19? Right. right. And it's going to be a, a variety of symptoms. It's mm -hmm. going to be a full spectrum. Okay. Um, you know, initially when we didn't have a lot of data, there was you know, very high concern that all of the cases associated with this were very severe. They were hospitalized. Yeah. As more and more information has come in from um, from China, from other areas of the world, I think people are, are are appreciating much more now that some people will have very little symptoms, just like the flu. Yes. Some people have very mild symptoms. So let's talk about that for yeah. a second. Yeah. Just like the flu, the, yeah. the symptoms, as I understand them. In other words, uh, what what can I look for? Right. Fever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And since this is as a, you know, an upper respiratory yeah. type of, or a respiratory type of uh, yes. virus, tell yeah. a little bit about what then would I look for. So, so most folks, if they have this infection, will have mild symptoms. So mm -hmm. they'll have a little bit of a low-grade fever. Yes. Um, a little bit of a cough. Oh, okay. They'll never really have shortness of breath okay. or, or those kinds of things. You know, um, they'll feel poorly. Okay. Um, and they should do as they would routinely when you feel like you have a bad cold or or, 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 or the flu, quote yes. unquote. You would stay home. Now, the thing is with this, as with any infection, mm -hmm. you want to look out for certain warning signs that, you know, th there's a subset, a smaller group. In fact, it's, you know, maybe less than one in five. Maybe it's about one in ten as we get to know more of this are going to have more significant symptoms that would warrant seeing or talking to a doctor. Indeed. Now, we are learning a lot yeah. about uh, how this virus yeah. um, plays out in, right. in, uh, in, in communities and groups of individuals, largely because yes. the vast, the vast majority of people who have been mm -hmm. impacted have been in China. Yeah. But to your point, what we have learned is that it is also true that the vast majority of people have mild symptoms Absolutely. and they have recovered. Absolutely. Tell me more about that. Absolutely. So, you know, we know, um, as is normal, right, if you come in to uh, your doctor's office uh, and you don't have a high fever mm -hmm. and you're breathing fine, yes, you know, uh, and you, you, you know, you're not, I don't have a condition like a bone marrow transplant we're talking about, right? Yeah. You know, those are folks where, you know, your health care provider is going to say to you, drink plenty of fluids. Get rest. Yes. Take Tylenol as needed. Stay home until you start to feel better. Yes. And that's really the way we should think about this with this coronavirus sure. as well. Yes. And I think that you know next year when we really are able to go back and sort of look at the data, maybe do more testing, we're going to find there's a vast majority of people. That's exactly indeed the way it's going to be. Well, you, Dr. Phillips, you said something which is very, very important and poignant here, and, and much of what this conversation actually has been very enlightening mm. in terms of just kind of framing yeah. where things are. So, if I have, um, if I'm not feeling well, whether right. it be the flu or the cold or right. you know, et cetera, and I'm at home, I'm going to stay home right. because my symptoms are not severe. I'm right. also going to do something uh, to try to make sure that I don't pass it along to other family Absolutely. members. Meaning that I want to make sure that I'm washing my hands. Yes. I want to make sure that I pay attention to how I'm coughing and, and, yes. and, how, and where these droplets, if you will, might land. And so making sure that uh, the surfaces actually are clean. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about those types of preventative right. measures, whether right. I'm at home yeah. or if I'm in another elsewhere at right. work in terms of the importance of washing your hands. And, and yes. also, let's talk about that. You know, um, that is an intervention that's actually been proven to be effective on 
uh, infections we know and are very familiar with, like the flu within households, that it's been actually been shown that folks that do frequent hand washing, certainly uh -huh. hand washing before you touch your face. Yes. Um, and, and hand washing is soap and water, and that's, you know, uh, or it can also include these alcohol-based hand rubs that you'll see. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And yep. Uh, and those are those are very effective against this. this. This coronavirus is not a type of virus that's resistant to those commonly used things, such as alcohol-based hand rubs. So that's so a safe So washing effective. your hands works. Absolutely. The other thing that, you know, you might think, like, you know, and this is something, honestly, that we, we all should do, and it's, and it's, and it's common sense, but, but it's good to talk about it. You know, if you're developing these symptoms and you have somebody at home that maybe is at more risk for the flu, like a, an individual that's older or an individual with underlying lung disease, if you can, that's a time when you just want to make sure that you're, when you go to bed at night, you're in separate locations. Mm. That kinds of practical sort of things can really make a difference. Yeah, well, what I've also been telling my patients, and, and I'm mm. curious about your, yeah. your thoughts on this, Dr. Phillips, mm. is that if somebody does develop, start developing symptoms, that right. rather than rushing to the emergency Absolutely. room, that a call their doctor yes. and have a conversation about what's going on. Yes. Because to your point, and I absolutely agree with this, yeah. that quite often that this is something that can be managed yeah. at home because the symptoms are mild. And yeah. so we can, ask, we can determine what's going on and better direct them. Absolutely. You know, for folks that are developing a fever, you know, that's something that, you know, you, you know, you significant fever that, uh -huh. that just stays. Yeah. Um, the other options are, I mean, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about telemedicine. I mean, here at NYU, it's virtual urgent care. Yes. That's another great resource. Absolutely agree. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, or talk to your doctor. Um, in fact, you know, during respiratory viral season or if we face something like this coronavirus spreading through the U.S., you know, just coming into the emergency department to get tested or, yeah. or, or, you know, for reassurance. We understand people are going to be concerned. But, um, but coming to the emergency department, et cetera, or your hospital is not the thing to do. Unless you have, I would say, two, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts about mm -hmm. this, two scenarios would sort of make you think, okay, this is something I need to talk to my doctor urgently or maybe even go to the emergency department. If you're in a situation where the symptoms are progressing rapidly, yes. So in other words, an individual that's well in the morning, but by mid-afternoon is 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 difficult time, you know, keeping food down, difficult time breathing, uh, maybe a little confused. That's a sign you need to see somebody right away. So it's the tempo yes. of the disease. And I'm not everybody feels a little bit poor moment to moment, right, when you have the flu. But I'm talking about something that is changing hour to hour, minute to minute. And the second thing is if you really are having a difficult time breathing and you have fever and cough, signs of pneumonia, that's another si yeah. symptom. I mean, I don't know what your I, thoughts are. I absolutely are. agree. Yeah. And I think that the points that, uh, that, uh, that you just uh, you know, laid out here in terms mm -hmm. of, number one, that most inv individuals um, are going to have, and have had, we know this because we're yeah. looking at the, uh, you know, the evidence, yeah. most individuals have mild symptoms and recover. Mm -hmm. So when would somebody want to uh, need to come to the emergency room? So first yeah. of all, if they develop any symptoms, uh, they call their doctor. Yes. Not just come to the emergency room. Absolutely. And the thing to look for uh, is that progression of yes. symptoms, as you, as you noted, including the shortness of breath, you know, et cetera. Now, why then are people so worried about quarantine? The risk of, of quarantine is that people are... You know, um, they're socially isolated, um, and uh, the, you know, if if we start seeing uh, um, you know transmission in the community, the the, eff the, the effect of quarantine is going to go down. And thirdly, if you have everybody in the same room or in close contact with each other, uh, and and most people in there don't have the disease, but you do develop somebody that does have an infection. By having people in close contact, that's that is a concern. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking about this, Dr. Francois, about like, you know, people are going to think that when coronavirus is detected in their community, 
that they have, that they have to stay inside, that they're that they that they that they're not able to to go to go out. And I would say maybe that is a moment, and I think public health authorities will guide us about group gatherings. But actually, taking a walk outside, where there's fresh air and a lot of breeze. <laughs> Uh, with your friend who is, uh, you know, uh, or your loved one who is uh, doesn't have symptoms, it's a healthy thing to Indeed. do. Indeed. <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking the time to have this conversation with me about yeah. coronavirus. I've Everybody enjoyed it. Thank you. But we want to try and bring some logic and some calm to a situation which very easily in our minds can become a very worrisome and if not a panic. I'll tell you personally. My parents are coming from London in two weeks' time, and we had a discussion yesterday. Should they travel? Should they leave London? Should they come to New York? I think the answer to all of the questions that my family and I pose is take the situation day by day, even hour by hour, and take advice. Stay calm. Make a cool-headed decision about what you should and shouldn't do. If there is a significant outbreak in London or St. Louis or New York or in Sydney, then one has to consider about leaving or traveling, etc. In the moment, there is no such thing. Uh, so we have to we have to take the the information that's at hand and make cool-headed decisions at that moment, uh, because I understand there is so much that's out there in the news and the popular press and comments that are being made that are scary and worrisome. We do understand that coronavirus is new. That's why they're calling it the novel coronavirus. That It is new and we're still understanding its pattern of spread and disease and how it affects people. We're not quite clear on its death rate, meaning how many people, let's say 100 people got coronavirus, how many people will die? We, we don't know that. We don't know that compared to, say, flu. Although when you look at the numbers, when you compare around the world the numbers of people who have coronavirus... Uh, and who have died versus the number of people who die every year from the flu, the flu still far outweighs the risk of coronavirus. And yet there are still many people who don't, who have not had their flu shot. My son being one of them, he did not get his flu shot. And he said to me, Dad, do you think I should still get my flu shot? I'm like, absolutely, yes. That's the, that's the major concern right now. So... It's challenging. It really is. I understand that there are now going to be some more readily available diagnostic kits that will make the testing for coronavirus easier. Until very recently, you had to send all the specimens to the CDC. Now it can be done more locally. And the likelihood is, is that we're going to see many, many more cases. It's interesting. Does that mean that this is getting worse or we're just discovering that many people with very mild symptoms are actually do have the coronavirus? I think that latter is true. Don't forget that most people that get coronavirus are going to have a mild course. Some may not even know they're ill at all. Yet if we test them, we're going to find a positive test. And so they'll go down as a statistic as having coronavirus. But yet if they were never tested... Number one, they may not have ever presented. And number two, the, the strong likelihood is they were going to get through this without any issues anyway. We do recognize there are people who are at risk, older people, yes, people who are immunocompromised or who have other complex medical diseases or disorders. But the chances are we're going to see a spike. That doesn't necessarily mean that this is worse than it had been. It means that we're testing people and finding a positive test in people who otherwise would have had a, a relatively straightforward course. Actually, in New York City, there's been a case of a coronavirus in a woman in her late 30s who traveled back from Iran. She's on, in isolation in her own home. People have said to me, is that smart to isolate her in her home? Actually, it is smart. When, when you have a cold, when you have the flu, when you have a virus, people say, stay home. Because if you go out, if you go on the bus, if you go on the subway, you go to a supermarket, that's when you spread this into the community and you can spread it so rapidly and so far. So yes, if you're sick, stay home. Not just the coronavirus, any kind of cold, because you don't want to spread that around, whatever it might be. So being isolated at home is smart. And you can be assured that this woman is being monitored very closely. She's not in serious condition. Those people who are isolated at home, if they are in serious conditions, 
then of course they get transported to hospital where there are established systems to take care of them in strict isolation. But otherwise, isolating in home is the smart thing to do. And we also heard out in um, in Seattle, residents and employees of a nursing home or a nursing facility where there have been six cases of uh, of coronavirus confirmed. Again, we understand that this has happened and we don't like it, we don't want it. But that situation is, as far as we understand, under control with, again, isolation of the people involved. And we're going to hear more about this. We really will. Don't forget, every year, sometimes 30,000, sometimes up to 60,000 people die of the flu. We are far from that globally from coronavirus. We have to take measures. We have to be smart. Washing our hands is very important. Keeping our fingers out of our nose and our eyes is very important. Hand sanitizers can be used. Staying out of of crowded places if you yourself are sick or if you suspect someone in a crowd is sick, stay away from them too. We've got to keep a measure on this. And of course, here at Dr. Radio and all of our physicians who present, we'll be updating you on a regular basis. And we're so proud and, and, and take it to heart and with responsibility that you turn to us for your medical news. And we will keep you informed and we will keep you updated. Around the clock updates from the world's leading experts are now on Dr. Radio, Sirius XM 110. To learn more and to subscribe, go to SiriusXM.com.